I really like pottery because you get your hands in the physical stuff. You're actually working with earth. And honestly, I love the smell of it. I love the feel of it. It's very physical in a way that painting and drawing is not. And I've always responded to that. And you're working in a three-dimensional medium that has form, whereas in drawing and painting, it's two-dimensional. And so much of what you're trying to do is create this illusion of form. And it's refreshing to actually create an object as opposed to an image representing an object. I've always been drawn to, to art since my youngest days. I remember having a little sketchbook. I would drive a long bus ride into elementary school. Primarily, I grew up more as a painter. And in college, I was still focused heavily on painting. And that was my major in college and grad school was actually for painting. So. It's later that I've become more involved in ceramics. Generally, it starts with something I'm called to do, something that feels worthy of my time, and I can justify spending the hours it's gonna to take to make something like that. Often that might be a birthday that's coming up or a wedding present that I feel really called and excited about. And usually with that excitement, I already, the ideas come pretty quickly. And I, I always start with sketching. Sketching something out is a, a good way to get it on paper, and I still draw and paint, so that lends itself well to the beginnings of my pottery designs. From there, I jump on the potter's wheel. You, you prepare your clay, figure out how big it's gonna be, and then you need to gauge how much clay you're gonna need to build this. But most of the time, I work on the wheel, and the first step is to throw the form. Generally, this is the most challenging step that takes the most time to really get the feel for. If there was a riding the bicycle metaphor, centering is that metaphor. Once you figure out how to center, it definitely becomes a muscle memory thing that you can come back to. And I think of my job potter is really just to kind of help guide the clay. Thankfully I don't have this to show anybody, but the worst thing I made was in high school. I tried to get super artsy and creative, and I remember I tried to craft this heart form, like a bowl out of clay that was shaped like a heart. Clearly I was an angsty, miserable, bitter teenager, and I tried to have this heart being ripped apart. It was very poetic and artsy and awful. You can think about the design, and students often come up with these super creative designs which aren't always a marriage of form and function. So you can have the most beautiful form, but in a pottery medium where we're trying to make something that will be comfortable to hold, something that will serve a specific purpose, if it doesn't fulfill that goal, no matter how clever the design might be, not going to be an effective artwork. The idea of clay, it's a, it's a responsive medium and I, I've been thinking how that helps me in my own relationships with my wife, with my kids, with my students. Because you can't, you can't force clay to do anything. I try to perfect the clay and overwork things and I think great potters are much more in tune with the clay, respond to the clay, listen to what the clay is trying to do and not try to force or overdo anything. And that's that for me is the thing that I have certainly been working to try to master. And the moment you try to replicate somebody else's style, the moment you fail. I enjoy very much the idea of making this piece with the person in mind who it's intended for and trying to customize it in a way and the personal embellishment that I think I can add to that that certainly takes it beyond a store-bought kind of a mug that this is something that was crafted with you in particular in mind. Here are some of the ceramic pieces that live in my house and it's nice because with ceramics you actually use these on a, a daily basis and it's not like a painting that hangs on a wall that 
you aren't allowed to touch. You're actually encouraged to touch ceramics and interact with them. And that's, that's one of the things I like about pottery. And these, this was part of one of my earlier ceramics. I actually made mugs for my wedding. And I gave them to the wedding party and had matching bowls. And for my wife and I, I made these goblets to drink our wine out of on a big day. And throughout our married life, we've had two kids, and with each of the births of the kids, I've made a, I want to say commemorative, but a, a mug to celebrate their birth and to give to the people who helped along the way. When I look at my own work, there is inevitably a little bit of a, a critical eye that I have to quiet that voice inside my head that looks at the various flaws and things uh, I wish I could do differently. And some of them have been well loved and they've got a few chips on some of them throughout time and brings up that for me, that the disappointment that things have been a little damaged along the way. But I think that's it's kind of part of life and part of ceramics is that it's not a quest for perfection, it's a quest to grow. I also am drawn towards teaching clay because Again, you're actually physically engaged in the material, and I think that is important in today's day and age where we're so far removed from the earth in so many ways that it's part of our, our DNA. We spent so many millions of years as hunters and gatherers, and now we're completely disconnected, most of us, from actually touching the earth or having anything in physical contact with the earth personally have responded. I found that that was missing from my life and it leaves me feeling centered to engage in clay and the physical stuff. There's something magical about the stuff there.